hello everyone today in this video we'll be discussing the fifth module of uh, web which is regarding the uh, managing state and xml json and advanced Java, uh, javascript and jquery so a few are uh, very important questions which are not to be missed at any cost so that we'll be discussing and um, this pdf can be found in the 6m pdf link which is in the description box and in the folder super important okay and the notes which i'm referring that can be found in the 18 cs 63 folder in the same link okay and uh, if you like this video hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel your uh, support helps me make more videos like this okay so let's get started uh, the first question is explain the problem of state in web applications so briefly i'll be explaining what it is the problem of state in web applications what happens is uh, by the diagram itself i'll explain see here there are two users okay there's a user x and user x and y okay so user x is uh, getting a product it's making a request to the server like in the um websites of um, shopping websites in that uh, user x is making a request to buy something okay and here another uh, user and x user and y okay both are making another request okay like that it's happening but uh, what if the user x makes a second request and uh, but uh, the web server will not know whether the user x is only making request or any other user is making the second request that's the problem in web applications so to overcome that we'll be using cookies and all okay so basically that's what is given here okay and the uh, user's information is not stored who is accessing the web okay so yeah that's all what is in the what is the um, problem of state in web applications here's the theory and in the diagram if you explain that should be sufficient for you okay so let's move on to the next one the next question is uh, what are the two ways of passing information the query string and url these are the two ways so let's see have a look let's have a look quickly what it is so two ways of uh, passing the information first is um the query strings and a second is cookies okay so it's uh, not url it's cookies so by using the queries will be uh, query string will be passing like this whatever we select here that will be added to the uh, query string like this by using the ampersand value and the post uh, if you use the post method here it will be added in this form okay like the http header form and passing information via the url uh, path so uh, for example see here this is the path given to us and here the query string is artist is equal to 16 so instead of passing it like this we'll be creating a separate web page where the rt16 information will be there and that will be marked as 16.php okay so in this way it is written and that's how the uh, passing information via the url uh, path works okay let's move on to the third question what is a cookie and different types of cookie how to read uh, create read write uh, to a cookie so basically when they give the question you have to go through the question and for each question what they have asked you have to answer uh, in key points so we'll be discussing what are the key points you have to write in the answer script for each of these question asked okay so it's an important question let's move on in the page number five so basically what is a cookie it is a client side approach for preserving the state information who is uh, the user accessing it for each user there will be a cookie cookie is nothing but information okay so there will be a user here will be accessing a cookie is nothing but an information will be stored regarding the user who is the user what are the user strengths how the user searches what the user does in the web page those things will be stored okay that is known as cookie and some other information is uh, given about cookie you can go through it how does cookies work so cookie is just uh, uh, like a information stored and it it does have an expiry date so there are two types of cookies session cookie and persistent cookie session cookie will expire after the session is over but the persistent cookie will uh, uh, expire only after a particular amount of time which is set as expiry date okay and how does cookie work when the user access uh, when the user will access the web the information about the user will be stored and that will be stored as a, a text document okay when the user again makes a request uh, what will happen that same uh, text document will be taken into consideration and the user's information will be seen what are the trends of the user what are the user's interests and based on that the um, output will be displayed and finally that will be shown as the output to the user okay so that's how cookies works and the uh, code snippets which you have to write is the writing cookie so basically uh, to write a cookie you have to uh, specify three things what you'll specify you'll specify three things what are the three things name value and expiry time name means name of the user and value what is the user's value and expiry time what is the expiry time set time plus 16 to 16 to 24 means from now uh, one another day it is set okay like 16 to 16 to 24 is for seconds so that will count 24 hours which is nothing but one day so one day expiry time is set and that's how you set a cookie so that's what uh, writing to a cookie is reading the cookie if the uh, cookie is set then what you have to do you have to do something like if the uh, means whatever you want to do and if it is not set you will display like this else you will display the cookie is written from the cookie uh, means the uh, memory and what is the username associated with that that will be displayed okay so here are some best practices given you can go through it how to persist the cookie okay 
So I guess the next question is about the serialization. Explain serialization. What is serialization? Serialization means converting the normal text into unreadable format. Okay, converting the normal text into unread unreadable format. Then uh, again, deserializing it uh, when it is to be uh, read in the readable format. Okay, this is just for the transferring of information for security purpose. That is known as uh, serialization. And here we have two functions: serialize and unserialize. So when we pass the serialize object here into the unserialize function, it will unserialize it. Okay. That's the interface, and if you want, you can uh, go through this code. You'll get more information. So basically, you have to uh, explain what is serialization and write the specific code associated with that. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. The next question is, uh, how does session state work? Okay, what is a session state? The uh, state of the session. How does it work? That's uh, the next question. So session state is a server-based mechanism that allows the web application to store and retrieve the objects of any type for each uh, unique uh, user session. For example, if you have gone to Amazon website in that uh, you have bought some product, okay, and you close the uh, screen. So what was your state at that time? The session state, you have brought this product and you have to click here add to cart, okay. So when you again reopen this, if you want to uh, continue from the same um, moment, what you will do is you will uh, means use the session state, okay. So basically this is how the session state works, different types of uh, different users are there and their uh, sessions are getting stored in the memory. Okay, so it is stored in the serialized format and whenever the user again re-logins, uh, that uh, specific session is uh, given to the particular user. Okay, that's how the uh, session state works. Okay, and here's some codes given. I think the codes are not necessary, just the uh, information if you write that should be sufficient. Okay. Because in the question paper, they have just asked, explain how the uh, session state works, okay. And then what we have explained, two types of caching. Okay, so let's have a look at that. It's in page number 15. So the two types of caching is an important concept because uh, what is caching, first of all, you need to understand. Caching is the same as what we do in the um, means uh, computer organization we study the caching, right? Caching means storing the recent information. Okay, so two types, page output caching and application data caching. So the main difference between these two is if I tell you the main difference, you can write the content around it, right? Page output caching means the whole page will be stored as a cache. So it has advantage as well as disadvantage. That's pretty clear to you. What are the advantages and uh, disadvantages? Yes. application data means whatever the page uh, is uh, changing when the, it is um, means again reloading that changes only will be stored in application data caching okay so more information can be found here you can go through it okay and here's the diagram as well diagram is optional but the main thing the content you have to write and explain okay so the code is also given but code is not compulsory okay so that was about the first chapter the managing state let's uh, move to the second one which is xml json and web services the first question, uh, what is uh, with a suitable script to explain loading and processing an XML document in JavaScript? Explain loading and processing an XML uh, document. Okay, so it's in page number uh, 22. It's an important question. So let's move to page number 22. So it's a quite long topic, uh, means the chapter is a long uh, chapter. So I have just selected the super important ones. Okay. So XML processing in JavaScript, how is the XML getting processed in JavaScript? Basically, you have to write this part of code. Okay. So first you will open the XML document and you will send the HTTP response to it. And then you will be opening the uh, document and storing it in paintings. So in paintings, you'll be iterating through it and uh, taking each element from it. Okay. Means you're taking each element, the attribute and all, and you're displaying accordingly. Basically, that's how the JavaScript and XML uh, is working together. Okay. And I guess that's what, uh, what about loading and processing that script you have to write and explain uh, regarding means explain uh, write some lines regarding the explanation of it okay with suitable code segments explain converting json string uh, to json object and php uh, object in php okay that's uh, in uh, page number uh, 27 it's a super important question so here um, okay using json in php using json in javascript okay so if they ask about javascript you have to write like this this is the script which is given to you so uh, here if they ask you about the javascript what you have to do is the syntax for the uh, json is same for the creating the objects in javascript e it's easy to use the json format in javascript so here's a code uh, given to you in that code what you are doing is you are creating a variable a in the form of json object what you are creating a variable a in the form of json object the variable a is created under the ja json means javascript uh, format you are using javascript and including json this is javascript this is json okay and then you are processing it means alerting the means uh, doing the alert operation and few more examples are given so one should be sufficient if they ask you about the uh, json javascript you have to explain this uh, in detail okay how to uh, use json in php so same thing 
dollar text instead of uh, where a you are written dollar text and the same thing is present here and you are uh, converting that object to php associative array and then um, outputting the values also okay so basically i have to write one code for uh, php one code for uh, javascript okay then we have explained soap and rest web services uh, with a neat uh, diagram so what is soap what is rest that you have to explain uh, basically okay so soap is um service oriented architecture um program i guess i'm not sure okay so it is uh, soap's form is uh, simple object access protocol simple object access protocol and rest is the representational state uh, transfer so basically you'll not uh, find much information regarding the soap and the rest web services what is present here after right okay by the name what you can understand simple object access protocol you, there is an object you're accessing the object via soap okay soap is intermediate api okay so some information is given here how do you access what are the um, headers and the other things you use schemas and all so you can go through it and the representational state transfer in that you are transferring the state here's a diagram if you can uh, remember this diagram it's helpful for you basically we are uh, designing a, a web service and then we are deploying it into a machine whenever a request is made that request is uh, taken and the response is given same goes for the rest also there is information given representational state transfer what are the values of the variables methods used and all those values are getting uh, passed and uh, response is uh, fetched so here's a, a web service defined by the rest and the request is made and the response is given here the application data is present okay that's how the overview of uh, web services is and that was about the second chapter moving on to the third chapter which is advanced Java, uh, javascript and jquery so the first question is i explain javascript pseudo classes a very important question so let's see what are the pseudo classes in javascript so uh, why, why why are we using pseudo classes because javascript is not fully object oriented language it does not have all the features of object oriented language like inheritance and all but it is using the pseudo classes for example if i, I give you this example uh, we cannot create directly a class object but uh, by using a variable we can create a uh, similar to class object that's why we are using pseudo classes okay so the definition and all is given up but the main concept i'm explaining now okay see here color and color is defined faces face is defined this acts like a uh, data members okay like a where uh, one die this acts as a data members for the class given to us so what is the class here one die okay so that's how the class is made and you can add the functions as well by function name and the parameters passed and this can also work inside the uh, variable itself so adding method to the object you can have the data types as well as the uh, variables present here and prototype color can also be defined so basically till, uh, till, here, uh, till here if you write it's sufficient for you you have to basically define what is data members and what is data functions and what are the prototypes for it okay so the three codes which i showed you that you have to write and uh, write the key points regarding it okay so that's what about the javascript uh, pseudo classes the rest information is upon you if you can remember remember and write that will be helpful for you okay till here it is the next very important question this you cannot miss at any cost which is jquery selectors okay so J uh, jquery selectors uh, what is jquery it's a library or a framework uh, which is based on javascript okay and uh, jquery selectors are the shortcuts which you use to select the objects from the dom model okay so basically the four types of selectors this with syntax and the example you have to write okay universal elements class and id so basically you will be uh, selecting the universal um, universal means it will select all the elements in the dom and element means it will uh, uh, means select the specific element what tag you have passed that tag which element is associated with that element will be selected then we have class dot class and which uh, class it belongs to that uh, that will be selected and id means what id it has been assigned to which all elements that elements will be selected so here is an example also given like here whatever is the a tag defined that will be selected and will be stored in all a's and here is an example uh, this, this is the best example which you can give okay like uh, for example dollar dollar is a shortcut and inside the uh, brackets you'll write ul a link so in ul unlisted uh what, wherever there is a link that will be selected so this is a link this is a link this is a link so whatever is in blue that is selected here another examples are given here like whatever is in green that will be selected and whatever is in the red that will be selected if you write these particular codes so yeah that's all uh, what is there in the jquery selectors if they ask about basic selectors you have to write this one if they just ask what is selectors you have to write this in brief and then you have to write attribute selector specific attribute will be selected what is the definition and what is the code for it okay pseudo element selector there are contextual selectors and content filters form selectors everything is very simple you just have to go through it once pick the important concepts and uh, just give an example
so the important concepts can be found here which is marked in bold what is content filter it will filter the uh, content based on what you have passed like for example if you pass like uh, where all warning text is equal to this one body contains warning where where the warning message is contained that all will be selected and uh, filtered here that's all basically if you go through it once you can easily get to know okay so don't miss that question it's a very important question the last question is explain ajax request by writing a uml diagram also explain ajax get and post request okay so this very important concept here what we have is the ajax ajax means asynchronous javascript with xml so here uh, if i uh, show you with a uh, diagram here only you will understand within few seconds see here this is without uh, ajax you have changed the time it loads the uh, change time is shown but here it does not uh, show the loading it will show the same page and if you perform any other operation that will also be applicable here and that uh, time when it's updated it will be showing uh, showing here so how does that happen is this is working on single thread single thread is there it will uh, display this page when uh, time has to be changed the whole page will uh, means update the time and then it will display here until it's updating it will show as loading but here there are multi threads multi thread means if you have to update the time this page will be assigned to this thread updating of time will be assigned to this thread and if some other process user selects that will be assigned to separate thread so these two will happen in background and this will be still running right so that's why this output is shown here that's what basically ajax is now they ask you about the code what you have to write is how do you uh, get the request this is how uh, it acts to the um, url and the output when it uh, when the response arrives if the uh, means whatever the answer you get it is success the if it performs successfully you will output as success else you'll output as error okay that's about the get and um, here's a diagram as well you can write this diagram and how to um, read from the ajax request also the same actually they have asked about the get and post not about uh, read and write so getting is what uh, you'll be using the query strings and post will be using the http forms so about the get you can find in the page number uh, 47 here is the code which you have to write this is for get operation okay sorry not for the um, uh, writing operation or reading operation here is the get operation you'll be taking the query string and then you'll be seeing if the uh, access is made or not and for the post information you can write this code okay the information is given here what is the difference between the get and post that is uh, specified here so you can briefly go through it and here's the uh, code uh, part for uh, how to make the code uh, a raw ajax method uh, code to make a post request okay so here is uh, what is um, being expected from you to write in the answer script okay so actually the module 5 is a very long topic because there are uh, many concepts here but only few are super uh, super important and much more repeated okay so basically you have to focus more on that and if you get time after that you have to explain uh, means uh, go through the rest of the um, uh, uh, means the content okay because if you as much as you go uh, go through the rest of the content the more information you'll get it will be helpful for you only to write the answers in more detail okay so before leaving this video make sure you hit the like button subscribe to my channel your support helps me make more videos like this and thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one